hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a see-through text effect in Illustrator. Now this was requested by somebody who subscribes to my YouTube channel because what they want to do is they want to print something on a white mug and they want the text to be white but if you specify white as a color it doesn't print very well and they don't actually need to print it because the mug itself is white. What they need to do is to make sure that you can actually read the text and so this was their basic design. I'm going to the rectangle tool I'm just going to drag out a rectangle here. Now it needed to have sort of point ends. So what I'm going to do is with the object still selected choose object and then path and then add anchor points. The reason for this is it adds some extra anchor points around this shape which is going to make it easy for me to pull these edges in. So I've just switched here to the direct selection tool. I'm selecting over just the two new anchor points that have been added here and here. I'm going to the scale tool here and I'm just going to drag in and you can see that when one comes in the other one comes in. So that's a nice handy technique to use when you want a nice even sort of shape. So what they want is a sort of black shaped object and they want to cut the text out of it. Now the text that they happened to use was the word someone so I'm just going to be consistent with that. I'm going to the type tool, I'm going to click in the document, I'm going to type someone's all in capitals and it's really really tiny so let's go and get the selection tool and let's hold the shift key so that we make it nice and big. Now we're not going to be able to see it over this black object so let's just change the color of it for now. It doesn't really matter what color you use. I'm going to place it in position. I think I want a slightly thicker font so I'm going to actually make it bold. Then before I start cutting this out I'm going to select over both these shapes and I'm just going to align them so that they're aligned to each other. So we've got our text and we've got our object. So the question is how do we poke a text shape hole inside this object? Luckily it's pretty easy to do. Let's select over both the objects. So we've got the shape as well as the type and we're going to the Pathfinder palette. You can get the Pathfinder palette of course by choosing Window and then Pathfinder. When we get there I'm going to choose this option here which is exclude. Now when I first click exclude you'll see that nothing actually happens and if we have a look in the layers panel nothing's happened here either so it hasn't been successful if we choose exclude but it can be successful if we read what we see when we hover over it. If we alt click and that would be option click on the Mac we can create a compound shape and exclude overlapping areas. Well the overlapping areas are the text that's the area that's where we've got like two things on top of each other. We've got the text shape as well as this back shape. So I'm going to hold the alt key because I'm on a PC and click this button. On a Mac it would be option click. Now we get what we want. Well sort of, we've lost our black. The black has been sacrificed in the sense that the color from the text has now become the color of the shape. But that's fine because we can see it over here. You can just double click on that and go back to black. So that was an easy fix there. And if you know what's going to happen then you would make your text black and your shape something different. Now the question is, is this really hollow? We can't really see right now because it's over the top of a white artboard. Well, I'm just going to move the artboard to one side. I'm just holding the space bar as I do because that turns everything into the hand tool. I've got my shape selected. I've got my selection tool. Let's just drag it out over here and as you can see it's perfectly see-through. Now a word of warning. If you're sending something like this to a printer to print, the last thing you want to use is JPEG as your export option because JPEG doesn't support transparency. So if you're going to export it in a format that you can then send to a printer, you have to do it in a format that supports transparency because we've gone to all the trouble of making this shape transparent, we want it to print transparently. So I like to use the legacy export option. So I'm going to choose file and then export and save for web legacy. I like this option in particular for a couple of reasons. I can set the width and height myself on export so I can change this, make it bigger or smaller. Obviously ping 18 and 24 are options here. I'm choosing ping 24 and I'm making sure that this transparency option is enabled so that we can actually confirm that this is a transparent object. 
Now, depending on how big you want it to be, you can scale it at this point. Just be aware that from this option, it's going to be exported as a 96 DPI object. So if you need 300 DPI or 150 DPI, you're probably going to have to fix that later in an application like Photoshop. But just go right now for the overall width and height. Make that what it is that you need to send to the online printing service. And you may find that they're just even going to ignore the DPI because it doesn't affect the overall physical size of the image. So just be aware of that. But save it as a ping 24 and you have now got an object that is transparent. So in the sense of the original question, the person who's sending this to be printed, whatever it is that they're printing on, white t-shirt, white text, red t-shirt, red text, purple t-shirt, purple text, green mug, green text. Because it's transparent, the underlying color of the object is going to be what you see. Of course, the other thing that is highly significant about this approach is that it is fully editable. Let's go back to our layers palette. Let's just open up the layers. You can see here that we've got the text, someone's, and the path. Well, I can click on the text layer, and what if I wanted to make that something? Well, I'm going to the Type tool. I'm going to select over the Type, and I'm going to type Thing. And so this effect is fully editable. This entire object is still see-through and the text can be changed to whatever we want it to be. So we could make it larger or smaller, a different font, a different word, whatever. So that's the beauty of using techniques like this, which are fully editable. Before we finish up, I have more Illustrator training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 250 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and typically mine will be better. I also have Illustrator training at udemy.com, and there's a referral link for every one of those courses in the description below. Please feel free to share this with family, friends, and co-workers. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you've learned things about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.